um, so let's go around. So you've, yeah. you've got the synth wise, you've got the move source. So, uh, well, he, the, the kawaii is on the left. Yeah. So, yes, yeah, so obviously drums with the triggers. And, and this is what, Simmons pad? He, yeah, he's got Simmons pads. Before, we, we just used to have, I used to have like one of those Russian um, Simmons kind of things with the white noise and, and it sounded incredible. <clears throat> but um, I guess for, for this set, because we're doing, also we're playing a bunch of the remixes, um, he needs to have more than just. Just sit, syndrome, sit, 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 yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, so we've got the, the, the sample for that. So you sampled some of the Russian machine in yeah. CMGC as yeah. well, so yeah. And uh, so then, on to the one in that case is also um, an ATC like Studio Electronics, yeah, you know? yeah. They did the MIDI mini, like they did that first, they minified the mini MOOC, yeah, yeah. <coughs> and is it one of the first models that's still actual MOOC? Because they, they remade them, didn't they? The SC1. Yeah, no, no, no. Well, that's what I used to play. Yeah. Um, but uh, we both have, like, we both have a mono synth yeah. and kind of as a backup and to have some other sounds, we have a rack mounted uh, ATC. Now the newer version, he's got an older one. Yeah. yeah. All the synth sounds are like between those two for him and those two for me. But I'm, it's mainly MS20 for me and the Mook source. So, so how does the signal path work? Cause okay, so, so everything goes through the MS20 I thought, no. at some point. It's quite complicated, but yeah, it's simple. Which is that, um, so Ableton runs everything. Um, so we've, we've got it set up so that my, my brother who's in the front, he's got two um, Betafox controllers and <clears throat> he has a screen so he can see what's going on. And we have it set up in shit what do you call it in Ableton is it scenes where that you know you have one bit where it goes horizontally but he can choose which bits come and then when it keeps looping he can choose when we go out of the loop yeah. and when we you know to make transitions so you can jam you can change the set you can exactly. be flexible with the set and he and my brother has uh, kind of certain things that come in certain things that we can't play like pads or um, or uh, like little samples from for example, if he goes out and he's like, oh, that's a cool track, it would work, that little bit would work within something else we're doing. He, like, he's got it in Ableton so that it, it's running all the time and he can punch it in and out, which is quite cool. Um, and Ableton is then running MIDI, MIDI signal to, um, to both Stefan and to me. And I guess in Stefan's case, it gets split out <coughs> to... Oh no, he, he isn't using the Kawa yet for uh, CV gate. Eventually we will. Um, but it's just going MIDI into the ATC for him. And it's coming in on, I've got a Kenton Pro Solo. Yeah. And that, that goes into MS20. And then the through of the MIDI goes into my ATC. So I've got MIDI coming in. And we both, for like really <coughs> sequenced, bits and arpeggiates and stuff it's it's midi and then all the other stuff we just play it live like if we can play it live we'll you play can, it live yeah. but if it's like bang, what are you gonna, what are you gonna <laughs> and then we, we we trigger it so um what about external processing on the bass and stuff? design like six bass um, but i mean is that 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 doesn't go give you any, you don't have any options to tweak that while yeah, they're yeah. Play, you oh do. while playing no but he's got the thing he does is it's quite smart because in in, in some bits um, for example, when, when he's playing, and it's, um, I guess because the music is quite uh, schizophrenic sometimes, and, and transitions come re come really quick, and he has to have fuzz bass one second, and then kind of a clean slap bass the next. He he programs MIDI uh, uh, changes so fire from Ableton yeah, yeah. into the pods yeah. or whatever you're yeah. using. Yeah. Okay, yeah. Yeah. and we do the same with uh, with the thingy with the um, MPC gets program changes so that every song he has like his four pads do he doesn't something need to go through it it's yeah. just a, when you're on the next song yeah. so so in that case there's even though the, the set is is clip orientated and you can jam on them it's still very much there's a, yeah. a very tight order to it does yeah it, but, it, but the cool thing is the, the cool thing is that there's a tight order when you look at things in detail but in the grand scheme of things actually my brother can decide when we go to like it, he can decide if we want to do 20 minutes of the, of the same yeah. thing or, or two seconds and because all the changes are from him, yeah. in terms of the MPC yeah. and that. 
Yeah, everybody. I mean, I could still choose to unplug my CV and <laughs> and play myself. <laughs> and this Red. setup, it, it is. Even though it's complicated to, to to program everything and set it up, once it's running, it's super super simple. And um, and we haven't had many problems really yet with all the older stuff. I guess the one okay, maybe one issue we have with the we've got that VC10 the vocoder from my brother. Yeah, yeah. Uh, that's I don't know for some reason it, it it's just it's a, a semitone off. But you know, if you know that a D is a D sharp, then it's fine. <laughs> that's that's right. the one thing. And but you know, to go to go and use something else for it instead, I I I don't really see. Plus, this uh, there's some confidence in knowing that the things that you made the original with, you know, that you can do it live as well. I mean, what about the whole show? I mean, you, you like how how involved with the like the lights and stuff do you get? I mean, for stuff. Like oh, you know, that's quite that's quite funny. We we program the lights, okay. and they're running from Ableton as well in such a way that um, you know every section has its own. So what we did is um, there's about twenty lights uh, strategically placed around the scene. Three for every musician like a front light a back light and something else one, yeah, is there one in the kick drum <laughs> yeah there's not one in the kick drum <laughs> yeah. uh, and then there's some like strategically p uh, placed behind us and um, I guess we we programmed it so that every song every even every section of every song has its own bit and then again like if my brother decides to to make one bit longer then the lights keep keep going it's just, just the same MIDI going into um, DMX, DMX yeah. and then DMX sending it out to the 20, 20 uh, lights. So uh, was that just in rehearsals you programmed that? It got to be yeah. cool on this bit if it did yeah. this. And yeah, exactly. So is that constantly progressing the light? The light exactly. Thing? So uh, like we've, we did two years of just night versions and then we did uh, six months of doing the remixes and now we're kind of, we're kind of combining two of those sets together and and uh, I guess last week, you know, just we just went on oh, this bit. Let's take this bit, and then just made it really. It because everything is set up now. Obviously, the very first time we did the lights, it was a nightmare. It took us three weeks and figuring out. And, uh, but now everything is it's running quite smoothly, and just to to change little bits, it's very easy. Like we could, you know, we could in theory decide to do a completely new song tomorrow, and pro program the lights and everything for it in, in a day.